Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to our legendary Ma Teng Qiang Onglei campaign. We pick things up for episode 2 from turn 6 in the harvest season of 195. So, as we come back into the game, we had our first battle where the Juez Force chased us into Wudu's Silk Trader and we did loop them around and I got some feedbacks about the mechanics of this campaign and I can assure you that we have no intention of exploiting the looping mechanic anymore. We basically wanted to fight them straight on with two armies but they somehow bypassed the town, triggered the ambush and made the ambush fail so we had to retreat. So we just had to imagine that one as a stalled out fight where we drag them out so Ma Chao can come reinforce and help us win. So let's do that. Let's get that fighting started. We did pick up armor. It is a red armor, which we can't use right now because all our Vanguard characters are legendary. But once we get our other sons to come of age, we can definitely equip that on them. So first order of business is just the fight here. We'll get Ma Chao to come back to fight. They're going to run away because they are much weaker. And we can chase. We can chase with Ma Tung's main army. And since they already retreated once, they can't retreat anymore. So let's see if we can do a few things to test some theories out. So Ma Chao's army can just enter anywhere into this reinforcement range. And they can come in and flush them out. Now you see here that even though we have 30 units, they are damaged. So they probably got shot by a little bit of arrows, but because of how much per unit health these guys have, they didn't lose any unit, but they took some damage. I have no idea how he got damaged because he was hiding the whole battle. Uh, regardless, we're ready to fight. And as we launch into this fight, a few things to make note. If we don't capture Zashu here, he will die because we already broke through his resiliency. So they retreated, the army is going to get wiped after this battle. Therefore, he is going to die if we don't capture him. If we kill him on the field, I think even if we don't kill him on the field, he might die as well because Glissa doesn't have level 4 or a unique model to give him resiliency. And both of these things we kind of want to avoid, which is why Ma Teng's army is doing the tech, because we have the shaman item here. So let's get this fight going. Alrighty, we're loaded up into the battle, and this is an open field fight. We do have reinforcement coming in, so we're actually going to pull closer to them, and we'll meet up first. And they have a very small force. We also have deployables, which now includes a defensive tower. You don't get additional towers when you're in uh, siege defense, so or siege attack for that matter. So because it's open field, we have it. And I'm just going to place it casually on this hill here for maximum range. I'm going to hide some of these wooden stakes um, you know, behind the trees. I don't think anyone's going to bump into that, but that's fine. And might as well start a forest fire here. Just dumping that right there. And we're going to get the battle started. We're going to talk about a few things about the Tiang people because we are doing this Tiang campaign and although we give a little historical spill about Ma Teng himself, we didn't really talk about his relationship with the Tiang and what exactly the Tiang people are. So while we have a very easy fight here, we're going to talk about that. So the Tiang people have been around in Western China for a long, long time. It is said they are descendants of a gentleman named uh, da Yu. And Da Yu is a very mythical Chinese character, you know, hailing from almost 5,000 years ago. And his feat is that he tamed the rivers. He created dams and leeways and stopped a lot of the flooding because uh, Chinese civilization, much like the Mesopotamians, started around the two major river systems, uh, namely the Yellow River, Huanghe, uh, but later on Changjiang to the south as well. And Da Yu Zhi Shui, or Da Yu taking care of the river flooding, uh, is a well known story. And it is said that Da Yu's descendant became the Tiang people. And Tiang, as a term, is something that the Han Chinese would call them. They didn't call that themselves, uh, which is often the case in a lot of historical sense. You know, we call the Greeks Greek, but they didn't call themselves the Greeks until much later. I mean, modern day, sure, but back in those days, they had names for themselves. 
and the Tiang people are still here today. We have the Tiang people in Western China as one of the ethnic minorities, and they call themselves Er Miet. Uh, which in their language I believe means people of the clouds, which is a hint here. They are not nomadic nomads. They are mountain people. The word Tiang looks very like the Chinese character for yang or sheep. That's because they were sheep herders in the mountains. And what happened historically is that they live in this western Chinese area and one of the major players in this area would be the Xiongnu tribes. And everyone knows that Xiongnu is well known for being a very strong nomadic tribe that plagued the Han and the Qin beforeward for a long time until it was finally defeated by the Han dynasty and was fractured into Eastern Xiongnu and Western Xiongnu and eventually parts of them migrated and then we have, you know, the Huns of like Attila the Han are supposedly descendants from the escaped Western Xiongnu, but that's way in the future. Uh, but regardless, the Xiongnu people became really, really strong. And they not only invaded Han territories, they invaded Tiang territories. And they enslaved a lot of the Tiang people and made them go to the Hexi Corridor or the arable land around the northwest region. And we're going to just shoot them for a little bit. And during that period, the Tiang people allied with the Han and often fought together because their other choice was getting captured by Xiongnu to either fight for Xiongnu or become their slaves. Uh, both are not very nice options, obviously. And so there was an alliance between the two. And after the Xiongnu got chased away during the Han Dynasty, a lot of the Tiang people either ended up as ancillary troops to Han armies or resettled into the Hexi Corridor where there was actually farming and arable land and lived among the Han people. And intermarriage was very common. And Ma Teng's father actually married a Tiang woman. So Ma Teng is half Tiang, half Han. And Ma Teng's wife, I believe, is also Tiang. And many of the Western warlords around this period had the same lineage. Uh, Dong Zhuo's wife was also a Tiang woman. And so, you know, Ma Teng, um, has some Tiang lineage in him. Now, that doesn't make him Tiang at all. I mean, historically, he had not any close relationship with the Tiang forces, but if you had to attach someone in the game to a Tiang force, uh, Ma Teng would be fine choice since he is half Tiang himself. But the reason why his father ended up marrying a Tiang woman is because his household kind of went into decline. Historically, the claim I mean, a lot of these old lords have very lofty claim. Uh, the claim is that Ma Teng is descendant of the general Ma Yuan. And if you're not familiar with Ma Yuan, he did appear briefly as a statue in our Nan Man lore series because Ma Yuan was a very famous Western Han general or Eastern, I think he's early Eastern Han dynasty. Uh, but very early period of the Han dynasty and his job was to fight nomads. He was a very well-known general. He fought nomads in the north, and then finally they sent him down south to the Naman lands, which is very similar to what Zhuge Liang ended up doing. And that's why in that lore series, we talk about Zhuge Liang running into a altar dedicated to Ma Yuan, because Ma Yuan eventually died in the southern land to the disease and, uh, you know, fighting down there, uh, mainly to disease. He was quite old. He didn't... Ooh, we're getting shot. Uh, we should kite a little bit more. And also, we should probably target the crossbow. We can send the general in to do that. Right, but basic idea of this army is we are so mobile and we never get tired. We just want to kite and not take damage. Uh, we took some scratches, no units lost, which is good because each unit you lose is uh, ammo that you're never going to fire. And we're going to hide in the forest for a little bit, let our generals raid on this crossbow unit which has 220 range, which is why he's shooting back or else they have no shot of shooting back. Oh, we're at the edge of the map. We need to move to this side. They're ignoring this group. They see it, but they... Oh, oh, oh. We got it. All right, let's get some charge speed to get out, including Ma Chao. Don't lose your mount, my friend. There we go. And Li Zhu is running, which is cool. Right, back to the Tiang situation. So eventually the Tiang settled, you know, in a very flat arable farming region with the Han. But once the 
you know, Xiongnu threat is over, the conflict between the two groups, um, you know, eventually happened, and you got multiple cases of Tian rebellions, and sometimes those Tian rebellions occurred alongside Han rebellions, as they are basically multiple different, you know, there's different groups of Tian tribes. We're talking about uh, ethnicity, and there's going to be multiple tribes with different levels of development, different areas, and different wants. So. That's uh, something to note as well. We can't really say the Tian are all the same and have the same wish. Oh, we're about to win this. I think we kited pretty well. Uh, we did take a few arrow shots, but that's about it. Mainly due to their crossbow range. And because this is going to be our main playstyle, uh, kiting horse archers, we want certain traits on our units, uh, namely uh, different boosts from the general skills. And for once, commander generals are really, really valuable. Because if you think about it, commanders can give these horse archers fire arrow. They can also give them the mobility skill, which gives them speed. And that's pretty much all these guys need. Because vanguards can give mobility, but can't get fire arrow. They can increase your unit's charge and uh, damage from the skill tree, but those are not very important on Tian Hunters, which really relies on kiting and ammo count and preferably fire arrows uh, to win a lot of the fights. So we're gonna keep our eye out for a few commanders if we can, and if we can get the commanders high enough level, the commander is gonna be able to um, give some melee cav. So once they hit level 5, we can recruit the melee version. Alright, we ran out of arrows, so you can come over here. Is it, they have a few archer left, but I don't think they're shooting with those. I'm gonna move him into two. That way I can still select the ones. We can back off a little. They're capturing our tower. Probably shouldn't have routed them that way, but I think we can just mop up now with the generals. We'll let one of the vanguards give out a roar, and I think it's gonna be over. Yeah, we do have roars, right? We have two roars. Perfect. And commanders can give night battle, which is on the same skill that gets fire arrows. Now, there are units that are going to counter us. Uh, spear guards. They move around in turtle. We can't touch them. And we can't charge them. So, there's going to be issues. And not having siege weapon is going to slow down sieges. Now, there are a couple ways to work around that. I think we can be a little bit flexible with our rules. So we will still recruit only town units, but let's say we capture a general. And let's say that general happens to have a tribuchet unit as part of the retinue. We'll keep it. That would be kind of a war spoil and that unit we can use. And we can set that general up for, you know, siege battles. But that's the only case. If he has other unique units that are not as cool, namely if they're not elephants, We'll delete those and we'll replace them with our tail units, which are better anyways. Uh, but if we can get capture generals with cool units, we'll keep those. Anyways, let's claim this victory. Hopefully we capture the general 60 something percent. Not too bad. Alrighty. Let's see if we can get some captures. Uh, that's not a good sign. Yep, so he's dead. Maybe, oh, maybe not. He still has health. He never appeared in the battle. Maybe they just get removed back to the court. That would be the best case scenario. We didn't kill him on the battlefield. Yeah, because if they die, there should be a little tombstone on the unit card. We didn't get any items from that. And here comes our first difficult situation. How do we get past a pass to get to the Silk Trader that we want? Well, there's a few ways we can do this. One, we can not siege it. Like, we don't take the pass, which is totally fine. What we need to do is just have the first army siege it, have the second army move through it. And that's all we need to do. And we can bypass it, take this, and then end the war. At that point, he can e either keep it, like, that's fine for me, or we can trade for it as part of the peace deal. I think we can be flexible with both of those options. 
Right. But that's what we're gonna do. We're probably gonna get Ma Chao to siege. Ma Teng will bypass, and then he will try to take Han Zhong, uh, Mei Xian, namely. All right, so that's all good. Uh, I don't think we're getting invaded anywhere. Hopefully not. Uh, we have our strategies at work. I think our wife should come out and form an army. So what I want her to do is set up here for the imminent rebellion in the future. And what we're going to do is summon her. Get rid of her retinues, not only because it costs us money, but they're not town units. And what I'm going to ask her to do right now is just to sit here this turn because she has no movement. But next turn, I'm going to have her in camp outside the city. That way we get a bit of extra food as well. And when the rebel form, I'm going to let the rebel grow. And let the rebel grow really, really big until they want to attack our city or our town. And, oh, actually, I said we won't let the looping town thing be a thing. Okay, then I will hire two other generals. We'll use the generals, kill off the rebels in a fair delegate fight, and then we don't loop at all. It's, we'll keep our word. We won't we won't do any looping. Alright, so with that said, let's continue to grow our land. Where can we actually grow? Because the problem right now is we lack food. Therefore, we should focus on counties we can't really upgrade commanderies very much like getting it to a large town doesn't actually give us more building slots therefore i think we just dump our cash into these silk traders which is going to generate most of our income because if you take a look at it out of our commandery income silk is giving us 764 and it's only going to grow you know in a exponentially as we pick up multiple ones because the bonuses adds up Right, so I think we're good there. We lack generals, that's something we do lack. So we should save up money for that. Or we can wait till our son comes of age, but I don't know if we can't wait, because this is this gonna blow over very soon. Um, Alright. We don't have spies yet. Diplomacy-wise... He's getting there. Oh no, he's not. But even if we... Take out Mason. I don't think he'll peace out unless we take away one of his armies. Okay, there's not a lot for us to do diplomatically. I'm itching for him to betray us and actually declare war on us, so we're not going to do anything with them either. Let's just continue. Alright, so new turn. Xian Yu Fu, level 5, which is good. Hates his former master, which is good. Injury trait, not so good. Pretty big retinue, not so good. Hmm. Two items, though. Wow, I want the items. I don't want the character. The problem with the character is he's not going to be happy in our faction because he's level 5. Like, this would be a better pickup, potentially, just to keep around. Yeah, but those two items we want, because we can cash out with this item right away. So notice our trading com is 434. So if we grab... Oh, we, uh, we have another one. I can't really do the replacement trick. We'll add it next turn and we'll see how much the trade grows. This, however... We can give to someone who is unhappy but it seems like we have two of these as well so can't do that either and he's completely unhappy so i can just fire him i think that's everyone's happy i can also banish him to get a little bit of money we can confiscate funds from him it will cause a uh, five points of dissatisfaction among our existing characters which we might actually be able to take because we are spending money on some titles so let's do that. Let's be a bad person here. I don't mind him hating us. Uh, he will have a grudge against us because we do this. But now we get our thousand back as well. So that worked well. I'm gonna have her. In camp. And that way we get two food. 
and now we might be able to afford to eventually upgrade this to a small city. All right, let's move on with our invasion plan. We set up a siege at Sun Pass. And I don't want to even siege attack or lift the siege. We're just continue sieging. We can't even delegate for a Pyrrhic victory, but there's really no point. Passes cost money. If we have a siege, they can't summon armies here. I don't need to take any casualty. I just want passage. So now... They can head over and pick up a free Silk Trader. Now, decisive victory, medium casualty. Given the army composition, I can just run Hongdu in and kill everyone. So I don't think I want to take this casualty at all. And then if he's injured, I just recall and heal him. And he gets some experience because he's only level one. I think that's that's a good call. I think we just fight this. Alrighty, so we were just in this map, or on this map, and uh, we're gonna hide all our units. Hongdu is gonna do the job of going out there. Um, I don't think we'll be able to utilize any of that. There is no really easy passage where the arrow tower will not shoot at us. So tough luck. Charge! They have no form, so that's not gonna be an issue. And we have Unbreakable, so that's also not gonna be an issue. We don't have Fatigue Immunity. That would be awesome. Right, so like all that charging, he got here and he didn't charge through anyone. Alright, let's go here. Let's kill off the range at least. Don't get bogged down. Just use the horse. Like, if you're driving a tank, would you stop to use your gun? Especially the weaker ones. We can get them to route, capture a few of their towers. Well, look at that line formation right there. Like, let's shoot at the... I mean, what? There's no livestock here either. Chasing them out? Well, I'm not going out. I'm staying in. Can't capture if they have enemy units here. It's a captain. Great. Don't be scared. Just one of us versus like 800 of your guys. Okay, now can I capture this? Perfect. Do this on fast. It's still strange that Pongdo gets the fondness to um, Tal Tal at the start because he doesn't join Tal Tal for a long time. He's under Ma Teng historically, then under Ma Chao, and then under Zhang Lu. And when Zhang Lu surrendered to Tal Tal, he joined Tal Tal. So. I don't know why he has a fondness. I don't. I don't think he was particularly fond of Tsao during any of that period when he worked for the other lords. Like having a fondness for Ma Chao would make sense, because he also didn't seem to mind when they rebelled against Tsao Tsao to get Ma Tong killed. I like how the melee infantry is just chilling there. They're like, yeah, Archer is getting killed by a cavalry officer, no problem. Let's capture this. Leave so I can capture this. It hurts your morale. Alright, nice and plumped. Ooh, 
Why won't you route? Alright, they recaptured it, which is fine. Because I want to capture this. This is the one that I really want to capture. Because once we capture this, our tail hunters can make a move. I don't think they'll chase us, so let's move these guys up. Oh, I don't think so. Uh, don't don't accidentally hurt ourselves. Let's move up a little bit more. Just stand here. Uh, now we're getting killed by our own archers. But I can't I can't leave this spot because if I leave it archers are going to get sniped. Yeah. We're wasting a lot of arrows on shielded units. We really shouldn't do that. Alright, we're out. I have a roar on my... Uh, my tongue could have done this a lot easier. Hello. Oh yeah, cavalry charges in three kingdoms. Very satisfying. Oh yeah, lose a few units, but that's fine. That'll heal up nicely. Alrighty. And that's what? Three units? Pretty clean. And first territory we capture gives us some extra experience. Now, the Sun Pass, we could delegate. Hmm. A little curious. What's his opinion of us right now? Right, so we got a pretty sizable shift here. There's a lot of ways we can play this. We have a few useless armor that we can trade away. We'll see. Like, territory-wise, I don't want the capital right now. I don't want the emperor. Because he's just going to run away and mess things up for us. He doesn't seem to have any major armies here. We could turn around and help Machal take this next turn. Like we would need a siege weapon to initiate the fight. So this could be an option. And then we just heal up, fight around here. When we get that piece, we turn north. That's one option to play it. Well, regardless, our silk income should have skyrocketed, right? 1,284. It's not because this one is worth 500. It's just that stacking 40% to all three silk traders increased it by 500 plus. So very useful. We don't need the settlement to get any more bonuses. Of course, if you want to boost silk income, what you need building wise is marketplace. You need quite a few reforms and if you want to build this, you must have a small regional city. So it's probably not going to happen for a while. And it's only a 40% boost. So not a big deal 
in my opinion. Having these three right here is good enough for us right now. We can upgrade two of them to one more level, level three. Um, that should be a sizable jump in income if we want them level four. Taking a look at reforms, I believe it's this one right here. Yep. And then the fifth one's right there. And then if we want the marketplace upgrade, I think we have to go also... Wait, where is the level five market? Right here. Yeah, this is the level five marketplace for silk. But that also requires the level four marketplace upgrade before that. So we probably need to get a school built somewhere first, just for one turn. But already said, we're going to get this first and possibly try to pick up more of the horse pastures in the north. Therefore, we're probably going to grab this one and then this one. Lots of things to do. Right, so we got the siege weapon going. We took the silk trader. Diplomatically is negative 15, so nothing's really going to happen. And we spent our money already. Rebellion soon. We'll be ready. Um, let's continue. All right, random event deepens the relationship between Pangde and Ma Teng, who I didn't recall because he didn't take that much damage. Like, we don't need that many turn to heal him. Therefore, there's really no need to recall and resummon. All right, so we can go back and help. I'm not interested in actually fighting this battle because we lack the fire arrows. So we could just take the delegate for a low casualty, which looks nice. So let's see if it works. Forty-four men. Okay, that's acceptable. Especially if they're mainly on the shock cavalry. All right, another bonus experience. Interesting. So like I said, these passes are big money drains, negative um, 50. If we tax exempt it, I think we still had negative 50, even though it says it's crossed out. It just crosses out any income. I think you still get hit. Yeah, by the building upkeep. So that part doesn't matter. The part that does matter is your public order. Um, it will not drop very much, but that's also kind of meaningless here unless you want to somehow spawn rebels But I think they patched that part up already as well. So we don't really need to do much here I don't even think upgrading it is necessary either Although we do get double the garrison because this is our front line. That is not our front line uh, So we have to defend here Speaking of defending there, we're not picking up any generals, which is sad we could pick up this one. Actually, I'm not sure. I think mobility might be what we need because we need that speed boost. Let's pick that up. All right. We're probably going to stay here until we can get the peace deal with them. That is so close. It's not going to get any closer in my opinion because unless they send a full stack and we clear that, we can't get a shift because we just took two territories. That's a pretty big shift. So let's make this work. Hmm. We can offer up some armor that is rather useless. It's not even a great armor. Reduce the speed by 8%, increase some charge bonus, but very small. So this can go, even this can go, that should be 4 points, 4.4, 4. okay. I can offer up one food, that's one that we actually produce, and hopefully we can get back, okay, maybe 122, 25, okay. Well, okay, 123, we got, we got something extra. And then we can get this peace deal out of the way. That's a big deal. Because now I don't have to worry about them. Yang Feng broke away from them. And they were at war before with us. So they might attack us. But I don't mind that. He's not a big deal. Okay, he wants us to become their vassal. That's another option we could have taken. Is play as someone's vassal. Sounds interesting, but I'd rather not. We are our own man. Now we have a couple of decisions. I probably should go help mom with the rebellion. That's going to happen in three turns. And we are going to prepare for attack over here. And the best route is actually through here, not through here. 
So we're gonna pull back over there. I think we're good. That piece definitely helps. We're not upgrading this and there are upgrades going on already. We're good to go, let's continue. We made it to spring of 196. We didn't lose the campaign. Congratulations, pat on the back, 1,500 in the bank. Now you want us to capture Anding, um, namely the city, which is kind of our plan as well. 24 turns. We also have the mission to get enough units. How many turns is that? We have 16, we need four more. 17 turns left. Okay, so we're just gonna wait for a big burst of recruitment. But here we can give our units some extra melee damage for all shot cavalry. But that's not that useful. His unique ability is internal blaze, which is okay. It's when he is charging himself, we'll get extra melee charge bonus, which is great. Double mass, which is great, and extra charge speed. So that's a good skill. This is also a good skill. But this is also... Mm, these are all good skills. Like the bad ones we probably want to avoid. Like we can avoid three. Is clarity... Dignity. Huh. This. Endurance. Because this is an army that does not need endurance. I guess we go here. And then move through because we're never taking this. Okay. I think that's fair. And we'll come assist mom with the rebellion situation. Actually farm the rebels with a fair army. And we can increase our replenishment for all our armies for the remainder of the game by 10%, which is just lovely. Do we want to go all the way down here? No, we're not recruiting any of those units, so we never need this reform. I think if we play this out correctly, Right now it's spring. We can build this in summer. Mm, that'll be too late. I'm trying to see how we can get a extra slot for a school. This would be a good upgrade if we can get four food. But this is six turns, so it's even harder. So we'll just try to get more money right now. We're probably going to do this and maybe do a rush at the last turn. So he's going to be administrator. So we're going to come over here. Okay, let's just check diplomacy real quick. He wants the peace now. We'll take it. I don't need to be at war with him. Especially he can pay us. Not so generous. Um, probably 71. 71. There we go. Alright, so we're no longer at war with anyone. Liu Zhang wants a non-aggression, which we can sign because... Look at it, we're going to be at war in the northwest for a good 30-40 turns to get all of this, just traveling through these land. It's very slow. So if we can get any sort of resources to help us do that, even if... Okay, actually in this case, we might actually be better off getting a flat cash payment? Question mark? Nope. It's close. He's just not very generous. Okay, 54. We'll max it out. Alright, we're good here. I'm starting to think maybe we don't want to come here first, even though the mission's here. We might want food first. This is what, a town? A large town? Okay, we can absorb a large town. 
I'm gonna betray him? I want him to betray us. We're allies. Oh, we can steal a character. You know what? We're gonna steal the daughter. Give him two food and per turn payment. And then we're gonna tear it all up in a war. So we're not actually gonna pay this. I mean, I wouldn't call this an exploit because this happens in real life all the time. Because we're missing generals. And this is a free general because she'll be part of the family. We can always divorce her later. She didn't come with any items. Shame. But she's beautiful. She's humble, which is actually great for satisfaction. She can boost industry. Okay, there's really nothing to complain here. Maybe the wife is four years older, but hey. That's not a legit complaint here. We can probably add her to the army, because I know they get along. Might as well share the experience. Alright. We will declare war now, so we don't pay anything this turn. It's only 40. Does he have armies nearby? No, he recalled all his armies. Yeah, we backstab him. Um, uh, that's not a war declaration. You know what? We'll pay. I think backing out the alliance will make him hate us enough to go to war with us, despite the marriage. And I'll let him be the bad guy here. And we'll still be trustworthy Matong. No one had to know we thought about canceling, right? No one will tell. Let's continue. Oh. That's a surprise. And the Emperor has escaped with Yang Fu. And Cao Cao is going to get his hand on him soon. I don't know through an event. Uh, I mean, if you're playing as Cao Cao, I don't think you'll get the event. But if you're not playing as Cao Cao, maybe you'll get the event. So strategies are always interesting because they could get fire arrows and a lot of cunning. Yuan Shao got destroyed. Oh, no, no, no. Yuan Shao destroyed their faction. Gong Sun Zan got destroyed. Gong Sun Zan's gone? That was quick. Okay, so he he he's iffy here because you see this, you would think he like left the faction because of satisfaction, because he's level four, but there's no grudge against his former faction, which means he didn't do that. Which makes him really suspicious of him. The good, the good news here is I don't need champions. Strategists we do need. We're going to grab him. What we're going to do is we're going to cycle strategists. Once this one reaches level 3, we'll get him out, join army, hire some Tiang hunters, and then he'll go in and do the commerce boost. And then until he's level 3, and then he'll come out. So we are giving him 2 food per turn and some... 40 payment. The 40 will just let him for free. That's something we can't do about. And I'm going to move the army into his land. We kept 50% movement on purpose. So we can do this and get our two food back by raiding, well, not raiding, pill not pillaging, foraging. Right? We're foraging their land. Uh, and then mainly we're trying to take them off by trespassing. Alright, Rebel has spawned, so let's do this fight. Any items? Okay, terrible item. I don't even want to care about that. So we'll delegate this for the win then. Hmm, should mom get some experience? Oh, it's too late for that. Should have thought about that earlier. Sure, 
Alright, no item. Oh, good. We don't have enough movement left to give us two more food. But we really don't need to. Right, so we finished this upgrade. We talked about this. I think that's what we will do. This will complete in spring, which means nothing because we actually don't. Wait, wait. Yeah, this means nothing. We don't get extra building slot for large town. So we're not going for school next spring. We'll do something else. Maybe an extra trade route. Uh, but we'll set up so that we'll get school in the future. All right. When's the next one? Uh, quite a while. This one's quite a while too. All right, let's continue. And Yuan Shu wants to be emperor. All these traitors. All right, two food. We could really split her out for two more food, but it's fine. Hmm. We're gonna make him give us two food, because he has nothing to do right now. They don't like mom. We can just move away from the same commandery. I think if we go here, we're good. We can't encamp, but that's fine. We'll stay flexible here. Are they still in the same? They're not, yeah. Yeah, it's not changing, but you can, if you hover, you don't see any actual reds. It's just a satisfaction thing, which is actually important at this point. We're saving quite a bit of money because there's nothing to build. I'm not upgrading the pass. Maybe once. 2,000 for double the red new. All right, let's do it. A cave. We pay how much more upkeep? 50 more? All right, we'll swallow that. Let's continue. Ma Xiu comes of age. Okay, we have another son. Defeat two armies from Yuan Shu's faction. Keep her status quo. Oh, this is like given to all the, I guess, governors, because the emperor issued a decree, labeled the traitor. But he's way too far from us. We can't really, we can't help in this matter, even though the bonus is quite nice. Yeah. The Tsal have answered. So this event does happen, but just doesn't happen when you play a Tsal Tsal. Oh. We want him. Disloyal. That's a slightly tough pill to swallow. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Yeah, that doesn't work. We don't get along with our brother. Hmm. I think this is the right move. We'll trespass. It's okay. We still have positive food for now. We also don't get along with him. Huh. Mom? Mom's neutral. Strategist is happy with him. Gonna start his own army? Ma Xiu? Yeah, I guess. That's fine. How many do we need? 
one more unit. Pretty much one more general would do it. We have a lot of turns left, so I'm going to wait. They can farm rebels here. I'll give them a few units to do that. We'll wait on more generals here. I'm going to place him here so he can attack the livestock farm at the same time we attack this. More efficient that way. And then he can cross the river right after. <gasps> we got a philosopher. Who cares about trade income? Oh, we, we had an item. Okay, so we can test this out. Our trade income is 480 right now. I know it goes up naturally because we're getting resources and all that. The, the trade influence is changing. But let's see what happens if we add this here. Increases by 15. Okay, so 10% trade influence increases by 15, which means it's quite pointless. We're going to go with Philosopher. Okay, we want to get the set if we can, but this 10 satisfaction is going to ease a lot of issues in the faction. There we go. So if we can't recruit, we might as well heal up this turn. Yeah, perfect. You're also going to get a Rebellion. Why? The Cruel Trait? And Faction Support. Yeah, Maton being cruel is rough. Which means if we can get this set somehow, it would e like neutralize, which is what we need. Huh. I don't want to sign anything with him. We might go to war with him. Oh, Vassal Tall Tall, let's follow history. <laughs> no thanks. Alright, we're good to go. Let's continue. Okay, he's just busy. Oh, Liu Zhang Zhang Lu Confederated. Okay. They're all, I mean, that means we have one friendly neighbor to the south that we have to betray a bit later. And Ma Teng has a kid already. Oh, Ma Teng? Alright, we have a new daughter. I was thinking about my child he just married. Ah, baby girl. And it's a strategist, which is great. Okay, lovely. Rebels next turn. Zamba. Post battle loot increase. The recruitment upkeep cost for Captain Renu is not relevant to us. Yeah, we'll grab him. Zheng Jiang, he left Zheng Jiang's faction. The wife is here too. Oh, Zheng Jiang wiped him. That's what happened. Right. Do they have items as faction leader and wife? Yeah, they do. Okay, they can't be spies because their former faction got destroyed, so that's good. She gets along with Zamba, but not the wife. They get along with both. I might need them here. Let's just get the experience. We do have army count, right? Yeah. So, I'm going to assume Zamba gets along with his own wife. Yes, okay. Obviously, they can't keep these units. Not Tiang here. And we should hit this mission at the beginning of next turn. Yep. And now we have some rebel farmers. They're not strong enough to be rebel farmers straight up. Like, she would need help or units. I can send her Zanbai and Pangdo next turn. Alright, let's do that, actually. 
，因而导致向前进军，勇夺荣耀。All right, I think we're good. Nothing to build. Not building. Oh, we're not good here. 虽然此地百姓算不上多，但总归是有人。Twenty-five percent commerce, ten more percent trade influence. That's fifteen. So that's a sixty, seventy-five increase. Minus the twenty upkeep, net fifty-five. That's the only thing we really can do here, unless we want to build this, which we probably should. Honestly, this is a bad building. Like ideally, the building here should be private workshop. <gasps> we should have demolished this last turn, then we could rush school. Okay, what if we rush demolish, make 480 less, and then just build school, get the school reform, demolish this, and then build state workshop? I think that might be the most efficient thing to do here. Yeah, I like that plan. Let's continue. All right, Yojong wants to pay us a little bit for military access. We're gonna say no to this for now. Don't wanna be too friendly. All right, Cao Cao declare war on Zhengjiang. Zhuge Xuan, Zhuge Liang's uncle. All right, we'll take a look at this, these guys at the beginning of the next episode. I think we're gonna end things here. It's spring again. We have the school up. We can get the reform going down more of a silk income route,、um, which I think is fine. We got our ten percent replenishment. We have a few armies on the field that we hopefully can bolster. To take down rebels at all three places, because once we have that set up, we can crank the tax to max and have our armies gain experience. And then we're just here to tick off Han Sui until he declare war on us, because his relationship with us is definitely going down the drain because of trespass. And right now he's enjoying our payment, which is probably why he's not declaring war on us. But whenever he decides it's not worth it, he backstabs us, or. You know, we can just wait till this times out and then declare the war. That'd be fair too. So we have options. We're still building up, and things are looking pretty nice. So hopefully, you guys enjoying this, and see you guys next time. Bye.